Welcome back. This is Dr. Pepper, also tournament. And we're back. I'm Lothar, and this is RDU. We're casting together. We're from Nihilin Gaming, and we have um, a lot of fun casting these open qualifiers. Uh, what do you say, RDU, about those matches that we I saw? say that it's really insane to see these players trying to get uh, into the pro scene. And we had some known names, we had some not that known names. And mm -hmm. the players proved out to be pretty good. And yeah. uh, now we have like a really exciting game following in the series. Uh, Weasel versus Rainy Hour. People okay. might not know Weasel, but Rainy Hour is one of the best Korean players. We saw him in OGN, we saw him in many prestigious Korean tournaments, and he is part of an European team, SK Gaming. He's like a really experienced player that was good in more than one game. He was a professional League of Legends player, professional StarCraft player, professional many other games player. And now he's in Hearthstone and he tries to get popular on the European scene. He's already really known on the Korean scene. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. And uh, you talk about um, League of Legends, that he was really, really high elo, right? Yeah, he told me he was like 2.5k elo and he had a chance and he almost joined SKT before SKT won with Worlds. And uh, he was that close of joining the team that won the Worlds that year. So that's something unlucky for him, but maybe he'll have more success in Hearthstone. And Dr. Pepper or Stolt All-Star Tournament is one of the ways that he can get popular in the European scene. He's already getting popular in Korea because of um, many prestigious tournaments. Cool, that's, that's uh, very cool information that we can share with the audience. So uh, we'll be watching the Weasel vs. Rainy Hour. I'm, get, I, I'm sh almost sure I played the Weasel a lot of times uh, 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 in the ladder, like I was sure. It's like I know the nickname. Maybe so, there, are, maybe there are more players with that nickname. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I saw one lotter uh, on the ladder. So you saw a lotter? Yeah. I saw, I think, one RDU or like a modified <laughs> version of RDU. I always see some pro players that are not really the pro players I'm used to because I'm always like asking them on Skype. That's that's you. And it's like, no. Yeah, it, it happened with me. I played with Salotar and I was asking you, like, do you remember? It was a while <laughs> ago. True. Yeah. <laughs> so that can happen. Uh, I don't really know what Rainy Hours are, like, favorite decks, so... Uh, we'll be I know what he plays too. recently. I know that he likes Handlock and I know that now he is trying with a really interesting Dragon Paladin version. He wants to make it better. He showed me the list and he asked me for some tips. And I really like the list, and he has a purpose with that deck. He plays every single card because of a specific reason. I'm not sure if he'll bring it here, but mm -hmm. I think it's a, the kind of deck that you want in open cups. He might play Handlock to just uh, snowball every single game and uh, make good use of opponent's mistakes. Yep. yep. Hmm. We will see some uh, good games here, I guess. Uh, other, deck, other decks that Rainy Hour plays are... Um, Warrior, I played the tournament, I think WEC, if I'm not sure. Uh, the one that Tides of Time won in China. And Rainy Hour played a Warrior, which got him to like 7-0. A control warrior, he really loves that. It's also really popular in Korea. Koreans have a really different meta. And mm -hmm. Europeans only know two players from Korea, Rainy Hour and Kranich. Yeah, that's true. Both being part of Digni uh, Dignitas and uh, SK and uh, that are European teams. Uh, Europeans don't have that much access to the Korean scene, while the Koreans have all the access to the European scene, so yeah, they the might steal something from us. Yeah. Hmm? Like, when we were traveling to China for the tournament, I wanted to, like, you know, get some information about the meta game in China and stuff. I was, like, blocked. I was like, if you wanted to get the information, it was not easy at all. There's like no um, VODs available unless it's like OGN or something like that. And if you want to talk with someone, you have to get to go to the secret server, I would say, because Chinese server requires a different type of client. And like usually you have only Asia and um, Asia, America and Europe, right? And when you, go, when you want to go to the Chinese server, then you have to go to use the different client. So it's really, really different when it comes to a metagame in China. Okay. I will be now jumping into the game. Oh, the Rainy Dragon Hour Paladin. Weasel. Who's who? Uh, Rainy Hour is the Dragon Paladin, I think. 
That that is insane. He's actually gonna play that deck. Uh, hand lock. Easy the dragon paladin. Until now it looks like a standard paladin. Yeah, Rani is playing the paladin. So there's the ninety percent twilight drake. <laughs> on turn four. He also has the mo the mountain giant, which is uh, good enough, I guess. Uh, what do you play first versus a paladin, the twilight drake or the giant? What do you think is more stable? How much, how much silence is pla paladin plays? I guess. We would go for a giant because there's there's an option the knife if if he has the silence and the one one then your twilight drake is just awful right so i guess the molten giant is better the mountain giant is like almost always better unless you're like really afraid of the bgh now the owl is gonna punish him but you want to play the giant first because um there's less chances of um the paladin drawing the big game hunter when it's earlier in the game yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Oh, knife hit. That's kind of an important one. Is the difference of you having or not having the 1-1. One, one. With the quarter master, that's a big big deal. Yeah, that's like free damage already. And also the juggler from the quarter master. Yep. So Can no... we see potential lethal next turn? No, no way. But Two it's really close. Seven. It's Crucible 12. Champion. No, I mean with the potential quarter master, it would be 12. Well, he has to play the the Belcher, right? In this he plays situation. the Belcher. He gives his opponent a really good clear with True Silver. Yeah, but does he have an option? Like the other option is only the anti kill bot. Kind of sucks. Well, does now, it draw? Now we'll have a weird decision for Rainy Hour. Does he play the Zombie Chow or does he just hold the Zombie Chow to not heal his opponent? I would just stick it to my hand, like not play it at any time of the game. That's probably the better option, I would say. He went for the Palty Shredder instead. So maybe he's not playing Quartermasters. No, there's no way. Maybe he plays only one. Like, I think playing one Quartermaster is the perfect uh, way to go. You do not really need uh, two Quartermasters. Mm -hmm. One one still skills your opponent, makes them play around your Quartermaster by killing the dudes. And while well, having two gives you like no real advantage. Well, in this situation, I understand his play because he he played the zombie chow. Like this kind of board requires hellfire, but at the same time, when you play hellfire, there will be still one minion uh, with the palt shredders. So it makes sense, but I still would favor the Tusuba champion last turn. Second zombie chow in a row. Now this is awful. Yeah. This looks like the Paladin that uh, got number one Europe. A really aggressive Paladin with only one equality, one or two Iron Beaks, double Zombie Chow, and like really good early game. But that deck doesn't have Lion Hands. Lion Hands indicates more of a mid range ish Paladin, and mid range ish Paladin usually only runs one Zombie Chow. So I'm not sure if I agree with double Zombie Chow, but maybe in a meta like this with a lot of Hunters, you might want double Zombie Chow because that's one of the matchups you want to win by playing Paladin. And mm -hmm. also, you know that you'll encounter a lot of not known players, so you'd probably expect them to play a lot of aggro, and then double zombie is really good versus aggro. Yeah. Now he Let's has see. to sacrifice all the minions. Wow, wow. Another, another. You can go master for battle and start some ping pong battles. I guess so. Oh, yeah. Can That's he like... possibly win? No. No, there's no way. Like, wait, 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 coin Trucible Champion? I think you play Zombie Chow, right? Wow, coin Trucible is really close to Lethal. Like, if if one of the hits would go face more, well, there was a small chance of that. But... Oops, mistakes were made. Why would he play the second Zombie Chow? For the Ashram to damage? No, that was good. He, he managed to play. That, that was good. That was okay. But now, it's only bad if everyone has a Hellfire. Yeah, oh, there and we see the Hellfire. Wait, wait. Is he killed when he plays the Hellfire? <laughs> uh, yeah, he dies. Yeah, he dies. He can't play the Hellfire. So yeah, yeah. A... wow. <laughs> this so, is yeah, that... against Shadow Flame. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm yeah, you're right. I think he dies, right? Yeah, he dies. Yeah, it's yeah, the same as Armor Smith. Like you gain the armor after you die. It doesn't matter. You're dead. I think you should die. I I'm not sure. I never was in such a spot. Maybe Weasel doesn't have any other option than just testing it. Come on, Weasel. 
Show us. Wait, people were talking about when Ignite made the mistake with the zombie chow and spell power, right? With the Alkanai circle uh, stuff. People were talking about the Hellfire zombie chow being different. Yeah, of course, because... Um, so in this situation, we will heal him, if I'm not mistaken. And no, 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 no. Live, live. So in that situation, it was something totally different. Uh, the problem that occurred there was that the circle with spell power would kill the Okenai. Like, you play circle, and then if both die at the same time, Okenai is not on the board. Okenai needs to be on the board to activate the zombie chow damage effect. That's the thing. Okay. But now this should be still enough damage. Two arms, man. So many jugglers. Getting the juggler from the shredder is just winning the game for Rennie. Yep. Juggler is insane, indeed. The, the sequencing is really good for Rennie Hour. Let's see the hits. And oh, wow. That got sniped. And the first game is going to Rennie Hour. On the back of his aggressive pod in with zombie chows that deny hellfires. <laughs> Did you expect that, Lother? Yeah, I didn't suspect that at all. Like, it was kind of lucky, I would say, that um, Weasel didn't have the Hellfire earlier on. Because there was a the, the turn 4 when there was a Pilot Shredder, Knife Juggler, and Zombie Chow on board. Well, that, that was turn 5. Uh, was perfect for the Hellfire, and if there would be Hellfire back then, it might be in hell of a different, hell of a difference. But um, for now, sure. It worked. Paladin wrecked uh, the handlock, which is not a common sight to behold, I would guess. And we'll be jumping in the next game. And Weasel. Renyar is playing Warrior, so I got him on both decks, but he's not playing Control. He's running Green Patron. First time Green we Patron, see Green Patron okay. in this tournament. And let's see how a Korean pro player decides to play the Green Patron. We both know that the Green Patron is one of the worst matchup is handlock. So. Yeah. I said Hanlock should dominate Green Patron. You said Hanlock is not that great against Green Patron. Well, it's it's a good matchup for Hanlock, but it's not like lost, you know, before you, you play the game, like an example, Freeze Mage versus Contra Warrior. I would say but... it's exactly the same if you play it correctly. Let's see if uh, Weasel decides to play it correctly. We decide, it's like... <laughs> that was the Frothing Berserker, one of the most important cards in this situation. I don't think you play it on turn 3. I would much rather keep it for it depends some on, on... worse on combos. It depends on the cards you draw otherwise. Like if you have like a early game minions like Armor Smith, Taskmaster and Armor Smith, then I mean and, and uh, Throating Berserker, then you can actually play the uh Throating Berserker, especially if you have Warwinds. But that requires a lot of stuff you have already have on board and in hand. So it's not an easy setup to do. But it works. I would say the only spot where you play Throating is where you don't have any other monster that you can play. And you have an Execute for the first trade that he's gonna play. That way you can ensure that you can uh, deal a lot of damage with the Floating before he dies. I, I wouldn't play Floating to just get him killed that easy. It's like one of the tools you just use sure. to destroy Handlock if you have like Warwinds and Warsongs later on in the game. Sure. That's true. He, dis he runs the Green Patron with a lot of Cycle. I saw so many Green Patron builds and I'm still not sure what is the best one. I really like the one with like... Loot Hoarder, I'm not sure about the one with Talnos. I didn't like the Talnos at all, like, sometimes the Whirlwind makes no sense when it deals more than one damage. I mean, most of the time you don't even use the, um, the Whirlwind for two damage, and if you want to use it for two damage, it's like in the matchups when, uh, where most of the means are one HP anyway, right? So, it doesn't make a big, big of a difference. Maybe in Mirror Match, didn't think about that. Mm. BGH is kind of good against the Frothing Berserker. <laughs> That's a good answer, I guess. Yep. Twilight Drake is being the, the best answer now. It's like 10 4 Twilight Drake, 10 5. Tap Giant? Yeah, I would guess Tap Giant, and then you have two minions which can you taunt up. Yep. Yeah, that's the way you play it. And you, you always play Twilight first versus uh, Warriors because they have Execute and you want to get like your lowest attack target executed. And mm -hmm. if they don't execute it, it's still like a big yeah, monster. There's no, no silence, so you're practically sure that this minion will have 9 HP. Renny finds the 
good play here. He also runs Lord Hoarder, so he runs the Psycho one. Uh, I, I, I think the Emperor hitting the board next time is gonna be really important for any hour. The problem is it doesn't have one part of the combo. The Warson Commander. The Warson Commander with Emperor. I would like slam the Emperor if I would have the the Warson Commander in my hand. But within this situation, I would think about playing Battle Rage first and Loot Hoarder to have more value with the Emperor next turn. I don't think you can afford to wait for more value in this matchup. If he just slams the Giant here, you are basically on a clock and you need to respond as soon as possible. I don't think so. Yeah. You just have to dig for the answer. For the second execute? That's not that easy to dig for. Uh, here, here I would definitely play Emperor. Insta play Emperor and then get a cost reduction on the other guys and next time draw, ba draw it Battle Rage from what survives. I wouldn't. I would play Battle Rage and uh, Rogue Biter. I mean Death's Wipe. Mm. It's okay too. You attack with face and then you Battle Rage, draw three cards and then yeah. draw a lot with Acolyte. Yeah, yeah I, I might see this working. Oh, look at that. Here's the Warson Commander now. And this is actually Grand better. Patron. This so, is actually better. Look Maybe at how many cards bad. did he draw. Yeah, my, my play was worse. This play is better. And then you challenge, you kill what uh, is played. Maybe. Or you challenge it with the Emperor. That's also really good. Yeah, I see this play being good. You were right. Hmm. So now... As a hand look, you see your opponent has a death spite up, so this this is kind of alerting you. It might end not well for you, because there's an additional wind that procs the combo. And wow, this is so bad. Like you can't push, you, you can't push for damage with your plays. It's just like only Beltran. That's it. Hmm. Why did you play Ancient uh, Water here? I'm not really sure. He might want to Argus it up to. Play around Dev's Bite. Wow. Uh, I don't really like playing some Fury. If you want to play yeah. a Taunt, you play Argus, so he cannot kill it with the Dev's Bite. Yeah. And now the Emperor will win the game. Yeah. Emperor gets so much value for Renny. So much value there. What he needs to draw also is um, Inner Rage or Whirlwind. And he used both copies of. I mean, he used each of uh, each of those cards were already used by one copy. So uh, I guess it's not so easy. But he has the death spite up. So let's say, let's say the minions will not be cleared now, but they will. So, but it will be still two minions up, I guess. No, that's Siphon Soul. Never mind. So I the think the handlock is playing too defensive. Handlock is not taking any risk. He's just playing defensive, playing defensive. And then he will die to combo because there's, that's inevitably like coming to Here, him. what do you think of silencing the Watcher and then Argusing over playing Siphon Soul? I would silence it the turn before, not this turn, you know? Instead of the Sunfield Protector, I mean Sunfield Defender, I would just play Owl for the um, two mana Yeti and that's it. Do you get everyone in here and play. Like, you can play Worsen Commander, everyone in here, and Loot Hoarder, smash the face. Like, you play Warsong, huh? Let's see. He plays Warsong because he has the second one, so I, I like that a lot. You get the, the draw first. I really like that. Mm. Not sure about this. You can now use the... You can use the Death Spite now, but... No, no, it, you do it like this. You play the Death Spite, the second one, right? You trigger the, uh, the first Death Spite, then you play Battle Rage and attack with your new Death Spite. So you set up the new Death Spite to be on one durability, and you attack for four to kill the uh, ancient watcher. And you draw three cards that can get you potential lethal. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, I liked your play more than what he did. Like what this he was, did seems really weird. Th this was really counterproductive. No, he, he sets so... up. He sets up for a lethal, for sure. But, but he, in this situation, he set up the same way for next turn. But he already dealt with the uh, with the taunt, and it, it's still the same situation. He has the death spite up with one durability, and he has three more cards. He can draw next turn too. He can just play... He can actually draw even more. He can play Green Pattern, he can play Frotting, he can attract with a weapon, and then Battle Rage, draw into the Whirlwind and Insta-Win, or into the Inner Rage. 
So unless Weasel is going to turn top, this this game is gonna go to Rainy. If he plays the if he plays a Torisan, this game is almost over, I think. Yeah, he plays it. Well, that's it. Well, you don't know what he will draw. Oh, he silences the charge giver. It's it's better to kill it, I guess. Like with the ancient wood. No, it's not. Now but... Rennie has a lot. Now we played. Uh... So you first play Floating Berserker. No, you, you, you play first war, wait, Warson Commander into Floating Berserker. Then you kill the Ancient Watcher. Deal damage to all your minions. You play Battle Rage. Because that's four, wait, four. It's exact eight. nine. You need Inner Rage. But you don't need to play Grim Patron. Oh, you don't have to play Grim Patron. Is because it enough you... without the Grim Patron? You, you want draw to get... so many cards. But then you can't play any of those, because you have no mana left. So, if you don't have lethal with that play, and let's count, that's additional 1 minion, 2 minions, 3 minions. So 3 minions, that's 5, that's 8. So you have running Berserker gets to 10, so you have... Well, actually it's 11. So 13, 14, that's 14 damage. So that's clearly not enough. And that's that's a mistake, you should have played the second death right now to proc the first one, without attacking. Because you can't proc your next one without playing the weapon, another one. Yeah. That's what he should, should have done the turn before. I don't really like this at all. Like, this is not the way you want to win against... Oops. Oops. <laughs> the rope got to him. He alashed. <laughs> that game of you versus Alash was like epic. A dream hack book arrest. Your face was priceless. I really say that's a lot. Oh, you, you, you laughed. Well, I tried not to. <laughs> okay, but this this makes the handle player actually in a position when he can win this game. Um, let me see. He now play. Wait. I think you play Doctor Boom and then Argus. You have to kill the Armor Smith. I killed Armor Smith. Play Doctor Boom, Argus. It's really hard for him to deal with that many things for the town wall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He can get yeah, everyone in here, of course, but then the boom boss can just kill Bernard the combo. Or kill the friendly berserker, as we saw in some matches. Hmm. He goes for the Argus play. And... He has to kill the armor smith. Like, it's so much potential armor. You can't you can't outrace the warrior otherwise. Emperor gets one more turn of giving value. The green patron player needs to win now. He needs to play really fast. Win... Now he played the second... Second Warson Commander and you have no depth spite up. How can you win that? With a whirlwind top deck? But he doesn't go for it. Like what? Oh. Now you have to attack. No, 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 you don't attack the bomb. You have to attack with the Grim Patron. Yes. Oops. Now you have to battle rage for one card instead of two. Um, he needs inner rage. I don't know what is happening here. No, that's not that's not how we play this. I think you I think you attack the Argus first. It gives you better odds. Yeah, it gives you better odds. You're lucky that you got the charge, but look at that. Oops. That was I really like the Bastion players, but Rennie Hour obviously doesn't know how to play this deck. <laughs> it is a really hard deck to play. Uh, I don't know what to say, I'm a bit speechless. There's no way he can win now. He has no wars on commanders. So the only finisher he has is Gromesh. There are ways to win. There, in Hearthstone there's always a way to win. There's always the chance that your opponent makes bigger mistakes than you already did. I don't and... think that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. It, like, it... Double Belcher just sealed the deal here. I don't know what to say. Too many things happened this game. 
Um, so now you, you you don't have even the activator for the battle rage, so it kind of it's kind of useless. You have to attack with the death spite now to, to wait for the battle rage next turn. No, uh, no. This not. game is really awkward. Now you lose. No, he doesn't really. He has the green patron. But what he doesn't do you have do any green keeper, patron? But he has the green patron. He can just play green patron in a rage the patron and what, then kill what that. Then? No, no, no. That then next turn is just anti kill bot shadow flame GG. Or hellfire. The, the play is definitely giant Argus, and you Argus the free one and the giant to yep. save it, and yep. you just deal a ton of damage to the face. You want now to round up the mountain giant because there's no, no uh, black knight, and also the, it will get killed by the execute anyway, so there's no difference. And this way, it also saves you from maybe something happening, and it gives an additional point of damage. So. I, I agree with you, you should have toned up the giant and the free one. I know. Um, Rainy Hour is definitely struggling with the green patron warrior, but I still have hope for him, at least in the final game of the series. I want him to show us that he can play this deck. Sure. Weasel played really well with a handlock. That's true. Now. He deserves some props. I, I don't think I saw any mistake with the, on the handlock part until now, so he just did everything he could. Mm -hmm. And that's why he I was agree. winning right now. He punishes the green pattern where that made some misplays. So yeah, big big props to him. Hmm. Now we have to go... Well, you, oh, I forgot how he doesn't have the battle rage anymore. Oh. He doesn't even have the war songs anymore. There's not like nothing you can do being in the green pattern over here. You just stay and watch. Right. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so uh, it's 1-1. We'll be dropping to the final game. Yep. And if I'm not mistaken, then it's Pattern Warrior against... Oh, we didn't see the second... Uh, second deck from Weasel yet. Yeah, yeah, he only played Handlock. I, I really yeah. like the way Weasel was playing his Handlock. He's definitely a contender for the title of Dr. Pepple or All-Star. First, he has to go to the top four of the qualifier to the playoffs. Yes. So, just to remind you guys, this is an open qualifier uh, tournament. There will be four qualifiers with top four advancing to the playoffs. The next qualifier will be at my 31. So that's the last day of May. Then we have June 16th and July 11th. I see the Shield Slam. So Wizard is playing a Corn for Warrior, which I would say is favorite versus the Green Patron Warrior. Uh, if he runs the double, the double Brawl, I would say he's like super favorite because if the Green Patron manages to make a big board, bam, Brawl deals with it. Yep. So everybody is going to get out of there. <laughs> it's, it, I, I would say it's very similar the matchup against uh, Handlock because there's like two ways of winning this game but the problem is Warrior has more removal for a Frothing Berserker We see the Izera does this mean it's a Dragon Warrior? I would suspect it's not <laughs> Why? Don't you like the Dragon Warrior? Don't you think it has huge potential in the meta? I think that Blackwing Corruptor is not so something going to play in a Warrior when you have weapons and you know, dealing free damage to something you want to execute doesn't really make sense. Yeah, you can deal six to it. And oh wow! It. Hmm. So we're gonna probably see a cruel Master on the acolyte of pain to draw, and on Rennie's side, actually, the Death's Bite is gonna kill the acolyte. Never mind. Uh, you don't really yeah. want to use the Death's Bite that early. You versus... don't want to, but you have to deny the card draw. The dream is having the Devil's Bite with one charge on turn 5, so you can play Green Patron and then in a Rage and then attack with a weapon, so you get four patrons. It's mm -hmm, almost impossible mm -hmm. for any class to deal with four patrons on turn 5, it's just like insane pressure. We see Revenge from the Control Warrior play. That's a deck made to beat Agro. It's meant to beat Mech Mage and it's meant to beat Patron. That is a card that can swing the board. Hmm. 
So he uses Taskmaster armor smith, right? Kill the pirate and armor up. Yes. Does the play. That's play. You really want to kill the pirate because the pirate is like extra pressure. And then Rennie is going to probably going to go Acolyte Whirlwind. And maybe consider using the Desmet to the face too. That way he cycles a lot, but then he loses the win condition by getting a lot of patrons early on. You probably want to keep the Desbite for like a potential turn 5 Belcher though. We already think like 3 turns in advance, let's focus on this turn maybe. So versus this, do you kill it? I don't think you do. Uh... You just mash the Acolyte, maybe a Whirlwind. Oh, I, I guess you, you, know, you, you just activate the weapon here and double... Well, wait, maybe not. No, you have to. You have to because you have to activate the Battle Rage, so... That's more valuable. Hmm. Next, next turn you want to go to to get the battle rage going. Well, if you are Lind, you give yourself at least two or three draws to draw into the green patron, which is like insta win. And you also have an answer for Belcher. And if you have an answer for Belcher, it's also like almost insta win. I don't know. I really liked both. That plays. Is the emperor. So oh, wait, three, six, seven, eight cards. So it would be at nine. So I guess this turn you, you battle rage. No, no, you can't battle rage the second time. Because you have... Unless you sacrifice your... Um, your Acolyte first. I He's don't really see a point. Draw. I don't really see a point in using the inner rage on that. You want to keep that for the combo. No, I, I like this play. I think it's okay. Um... Of course, you could just ignore it and just put the Emperor to challenge the Belcher, but this play is also pretty fine. It's only bad if your opponent has the second Cruel Taskmaster or a weapon. And we know he has both, but really doesn't. Mm hmm, that's true. Would you favor the weapon or the Cruel Taskmaster? I would, I would say it's the, the weapon is better and armor up to keep the Taskmaster. Hmm. You have to execute, right? So, not sure if showing the weapon is the best play. You might draw into a death bite and you might want to use that. It happens to me quite often. And now the Emperor is just gonna challenge the board, getting the discount on the double whirlwind, having the floating double whirlwind worse than commander is just um, bananas. Yeah, that's nuts. That's nuts. Bananas and nuts. We can make an ice cream with that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, Brawl is so... effective versus patrons, but we see no patrons at the moment on Renny's board. Look at that, he could have um, big game hunted the, uh, the Emperor if, it have, if he would have kept the Taskmaster in his hand. I think that most of the patron decks run a boom, so you probably want the BJH for that. Yeah, yeah, that's also true. Okay, so oh. how much, how much oh. damage is that? That has to be a lot of damage. I think second floating should be lethal for sure. That's what I think that's what he's fishing for. He needs to execute that to not overdraw. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we see that everyone get in here. So next turn you play No no, do you have you have to wait to turn nine with the combo. So you can play Warson Commander, Frotting, and uh the Grim Patron, and that's basically game. Because then you deal you have inner rage for the patron, double whirlwinds, so you get full board. And with full board, with one inner rage, you get five patrons for 15, uh, 17 damage, and then you have Frotting Berserker for 19, and plus 7, plus 7. So that's 26, 34 damage. So it's actually lethal on turn 8, on turn 9. I think the play is just Gromash in a rage, and then draw with Battle Rage. You might overdraw, but do you care? Oh, you don't overdraw. It's like perfect. Ah, that, that is the play. And Renny sees it. Yep. And the next turn... I don't think he even needs double frotting. He already puts his opponent... Oh, double frotting. Okay, that's game. <laughs> has to be game. Yeah, that that's game. So now he has to execute and Shields Maiden. And armor up. I guess. Or just Shields Maiden Big Game Hunter. Uh, I play he... Uh, well, he would play that. 
Like that makes more sense. Shields made and became hunter, I guess. Hmm. I think he'll be at 25. That's three monsters on board. He plays Frotting Frotting, Worse on Whirlwind, Whirlwind, Cruel. Ah, too much to calculate. It's, it's lethal. I think you just do it. And it's, it's definitely lethal. lethal. Like double Whirlwind with full board is, ah, plus, is it lethal? plus 14. Without the BGH, is it lethal? Oh, wait, he doesn't have the, uh, the Inner Rage. So he will only have four patrons. But he has the. So you can play Cruel as Master too. Let, let me calculate it first. So it's four. And then is like the damage from frottings, and the frottings gain. It's lethal. Five, six, twelve. Twelve to each twenty-four. Twenty-five, twenty-six. It's lethal. And then it's, it's like definitely lethal. Twenty-six plus two, and then plus two. Thirty damage. It's thirty damage. It's three o three over lethal. He needs to play Worsen Commander and then double Floating Krolta's Master and then double Whirlwind. No, then attack face with Krolta's Master and then yeah, double yeah, Whirlwind. Yeah. And that's lethal. Why does he do Armor Smith? Wait, what? He just missed lethal. Face foul. Maybe we missed lethal? No. No, no, no. There's no way we missed lethal. Because you have full board, so each of the Whirlwinds gives you uh, seven additional damage plus one of the minions from your opponent so that's 16 damage just from the double whirlwinds then you have additional two damage from the task that's it's, that's 30. 18. it's 30 it's 30 by my calculation and it's uh 20 with the attack of the cruel taskmaster and then you have 24 with the attack from the um from the ah oh, what was the name frothing frothings and then you have two from the uh from the Gnomish Inventor. Doesn't matter, there's no way he misses it now. Hmm. No, there's no way you miss it now. I guess so. Well, you never know. <laughs> well, he is... Doesn't he have less damage now? No, it's like way more. No, it's the same amount. No, it's... Oh, it's way more. We have so many more monsters on the board. It has to be way more. We could also play the Armor Smith. I don't know why he doesn't. Playing Armor Smith means 4 more extra damage. Plus, the Armor Smith is 5 more extra damage. Plus, double the armor. That's like way more than lethal, for sure. Well, the armor doesn't matter if you win the game. What What is Rainy Hour thinking about? No idea. Maybe he has lag on Europe. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, that's actually possible. Then why does he play Green Patch? <laughs> that's like the worst deck to play. If you have <laughs> if you have yeah. lag or if you play slow, it's the worst deck. Like well, you just queue the attacks. There's no way you miss this little. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, like way it's more okay. than last turn. It's like plus 10 over. So last turn it was like only 3 or 4 over. So even though he missed little, Rainy Hour managed to win. Maybe we'll see more games from him to see him uh, trying to redeem himself after this weird performance with the Patron Warrior. Well, I guess he... If you missed the lethal on that turn, like, maybe he actually doesn't know he missed it, right? And then it's really hard to... You know... Um, how do you say that? Redeem yourself. Well, I think he might rewatch the stream and uh, see the mistake. Uh, also, props to Weasel, he played really well in the Halo games. I didn't see any mistake, I think. And yeah. in the Warrior games, I didn't really like the build. I personally don't think Revenge is that great. Even versus Patron, they usually kill you with Frottings. And um, I think he could have played better value cards. And in some turns, as you said, maybe keep the Krolta's Master a bit more or not to keep the weapon. And that made the difference. Maybe if he just played like, that, like standard double brawl contra Warrior, he would have won. But at least he is he knows that he's a good handlock player. Yeah, so that's true. he needs to get one or two more decks and get he way still, better conquest. Yeah, still still um next chances in the um uh, open qualifiers for Dr. Pepper. Yeah, so you weeks. said the next one is on uh, 30, 30, 31 on of May, right? Yeah. Till last day of May. Okay, so the that's, last day. that's Sunday. 
And um, yeah, that's basically it. We're going to a short break and we'll be right back with the next match. <laughs> 